man that doesn't know how to pull a chainsaw, it turns out. <laughs> we are back in the garage today. So it's been a while since I needed a chainsaw. I've just kind of had them hanging up here, but this one needs a new pull cord. I have it. Anyway, this one's been kind of a problem child. We need to just get this running and selling it. I have my 180C, I have the 029 Super, and I have the big guy here. This is our chainsaw regiment for now. I think what I'd like to do is get this guy running in the next week or so and get him sold so that I can get either an old, another 029 Super or maybe another uh, 361. These saws haven't been cleaned up in a while, so the first thing that I think I'm going to do is just grab a saw and start cleaning it. I got a chainsaw case for chains for both the 029 and the 500. Uh, this is just an empty case. Let's grab this saw off the shelf and get to work cleaning it. I just got this all clean. But I take this pick right here, and I take this, and I take this rag. You see, it's all the stuff I got out of it. It's a bunch of wood pulp that kind of gets buried in there from use. And there's still plenty of it on the saw here. You can see it just kind of kicks up like that. And if you don't clean this saw up, Every time you use it, all of the oil passages that oil all the, the chain bits and the gear bits get all clogged up. And you end up burning up a bunch of blades and your saw doesn't run efficiently. So we're gonna we're gonna give this thing a good clean out now and just kinda get all this freaked up. But uh all cleaned up for the most part. Probably clean it up a little bit more. Get all of the, the wood pulp out of here, but a sharpened chain back on this blade. I like to flip the uh, bars over every time I put a new chain on or a new sharpened chain on. It just helps the the mechanisms inside of here wear more evenly. Go ahead and cover here. Right back on is your studs. Start by just giving the back a snug down, not like super tight. Just barely snug it down, snug the front one down, finger tight, and then I'm just gonna come up here and make sure this chain snaps a little bit. So it could probably be a little bit tighter, but honestly, that's pretty good because once I tighten this all the way down, it's ready to go. You see, I got a little bit of play right here and up there. New sharpened chain on there. This one's ready for war. So I want to clean the air filter on this. I haven't taken this off in a while. Yeah, back this is a used saw that we got. It's actually a really good running saw, but it had some problems. A little the plug that was supposed to hold this cover onto the back here didn't really like to stay. This chainsaw doesn't really like to idle, and kind of came to me early morning in a dream, like. I'm not a chainsaw expert by any means. I'm just kind of mechanically inclined. This thing is dirty. So how much of this can we scrape off of here? <laughs> Next saw I'm working on is our 180C here. This is the smallest saw that we have. It's the first saw that we had, technically. We haven't used this saw since we started buying the other saws. I want to make sure that this thing is running tip-top shape because this thing is actually not a bad saw for doing small work. We're gonna throw a new blade on it. We're gonna clean it all up and, and get it fired today. These 180Cs are what you call a beginner saw. I really like them a lot. You don't need a, a tool to pull these things apart like you do with all the other chainsaws. You can tell this thing's really dirty, probably hasn't been cleaned ever. We're gonna go through here. The last time we used this chainsaw, it just pretty much overheated the blade right away and we weren't really being super effective with this saw. Now right away we got other saws and, and like, I quickly educated myself on the right way to run a saw and we, I don't believe we ever cleaned this thing out before. You can tell there's a bunch of junk in here. here that's the main passageway to oil the chain between that right there and that channel right there. So we have all this crud kind of built up. Two down, one to go. What you doing? You helping dad in the garage? Bye. Ah, this is the last one, the biggest one. Here's a 500i. This is the biggest, baddest beast we have in our arsenal. Am I gonna need two hands for this? Probably. Anyway, yeah. Let's get it off the rack and start tuning it up and getting it cleaned. She's already made quite the mess. I'm good as new. <laughs> Cover on. Something like that. Wait. Uh, I play through that out. 
I pretty much got this all cleaned up, all the wood pulp out. I'm not gonna get this thing the cleanest that it's ever been. I'm already sharpened chain here, ready to go. So the next step is to just get that chain on that bar. I'll get them all started up and go chop some wood. This cover keeps coming off and I pull the chain brake off. A few moments later. I don't know. I guess we'll try it again. A big dent here. All I have left is the big stuff. Guys, look at the pile that this small little chainsaw was able to make. All that I chopped with just this little guy. You'd be surprised what a small chainsaw with a sharp blade can do if you know how to use it right. I think uh, I'll probably pull the 500 eye out to get the rest of this done. There's not much here on this pile left to go. And I'm back on the big stuff. That's all the wood we have left that we still have to cut and process and get split and i think a lot of this is going to end up being next year's wood because as warm as it's being i don't think we're going to have any cold snaps down in the negatives and what that means is that we're going to be burning a whole lot less wood which is a good thing for us because we were not prepared for a really cold winter i think we've been kind of screwed or we would ended up having a call and and pay top daughter, dollar to get some more wood here so that the house was able to stay warm pretty thankful for the weather that we've had this year even though we're not in an rv we'll take it go ahead and throw all this in one of the woodsheds and uh, i'll probably come back tomorrow for some of this stuff there's some small pieces in here i could probably dig out if i really wanted to but it's mud soup out here so i don't know supposed to be freezing my ass off so oh yesterday i was out here with a little old ms 180c and i just chopped up all the small stuff we got all that out of the way now all we have left is some of the bigger stuff that needs to get gone through i got a small pile there that i gotta work through and then i got the big giant guy there. there's a whole bunch of wood in here it's kind of deceiving there's a whole lot of stuff to chop up today we're gonna be switching to the big saw this is our 500 i haven't started this guy up in a while i'll show you kind of why this saw is so different i'm gonna show you how much easier it is to start a saw like this even though it's a much bigger saw because it's fuel injected, this thing is is a very easy saw to use, and it's I'm glad we have it. See how easily it starts cold right off my shoe. Oh, I'm an old man that doesn't know how to pull a chainsaw. It turns out. Oh. <laughs> Don't do what I do. Catch grip. Should start it up. I might have flooded it. Come on. Come on, start. Ha! Man. I think part of the problem is, is I'm just not mad enough to start this chainsaw. I'm okay to admit that. Ugh. I wish I was 20 years younger. <laughs> <laughs> 